Hello women of God, welcome to another Bible in a Year video. So today I'm recording from my laptop because I'm away from home. And yeah, so let's pray and get into the word together. Also, no webcam today, but who cares anyways? <laughs> All you need to see is the text. So yeah. And pause the music. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together and read your word. Um, Father, I pray that you would use this time to lead us into your beautiful truth. Thank you for your glorious gospel. Thank you for saving lost sinners like us, Lord. Would you continue to um, just set us free in your truth, Lord. Um, thank you that you are the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done and who you are. Please teach us more about how amazing you are as we read. Please help us to be completely dependent on your Holy Spirit, not on ourself, but on you, God. On you and on your Holy Spirit. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we get to read Numbers 36 and Deuteronomy chapter 1, as well as Mark 11, 1 through 14. So let's get right into the word. Numbers 36 the heads of the fathers' houses of the clan of the people of Gilead, the son of Machir, son of Manasseh, from the clans of the people of Joseph, came near and spoke before Moses and before the chiefs, the heads of the fathers' houses of the people of Israel. They said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for inheritance by lot to the people of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, to his daughters. But if they are married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the people of Israel, then their inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of our fathers and added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So it will be taken away from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the people of Israel comes, then their inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry, and their inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the people of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the people of Joseph is right. This is what the Lord commands concerning the daughters of Zelophehad. Let them marry whom they think best. Only they shall marry within the clan of the tribe of their father. The inheritance of the people of Israel shall not be transferred from one tribe to another. For every one of the people of Israel shall hold on to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter who possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the people of Israel shall be wife to one of the clan of the tribe of her father, so that every one of the people of Israel may possess the inheritance of his fathers. So no inheritance shall be transferred from one tribe to another, for each of the tribes of the people of Israel shall hold on to its own inheritance. The daughters of Zelophehad did as the Lord commanded Moses, for Mala, Tirzah, Hagla, Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married to sons of their father's brothers. They were married into the clans of the people of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of their father's clan. These are the commandments and the rules that the Lord commanded through Moses to the people of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho. Okay, before I move on, we are going to grab the notes from that chapter. So here are those notes. It says, 
uh, says C, so for 36, 1 through 11, it says C note on 27, 1 through 11. So, the note reads, Rules for inheritance of land, which notably include women, are explained after the account of Zelophad's daughters. These legal requirements are similar in form to those listed in Exodus 21, 1 through 22:17. Zelophad had died without leaving a male heir, and his daughters petitioned Moses and the leaders to allow the daughters to inherit their father's portion in the land and not to let his name be cut off. The names of all five daughters are recorded in verse 1 of Numbers 27. In chapter 36, a related question is raised by tribal leaders. If the daughters of Zelophid marry men of a different tribe, will their father's inheritance be transferred to that tribe? In response to both questions, the Lord answers that the family and tribal legacies should be protected. 27.7 and 36.6 these, uh, these protections, as well as the prohibition against permanent transfer of land from one family to another, sorry, um, from one family to another, are rooted in God's ultimate ownership of the promised land, Leviticus 25:23, and the fact that He has entrusted it to all His people as good gift and permanent possession to be enjoyed. And then uh, the following verses, and it says. The land is not simply private property be, to be transferred on the basis of human convention and agreement. Rather, it symbolizes life with God. Jubilee. So in 36.4, um, the Jubilee is mentioned. Uh, 36.4 says, And when the Jubilee of the people of Israel comes, then... Their inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry, and their f inheritance will be taken from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Okay, I am going to let Speechify read this clearly for us. Numbers 36. Thirty-six goal and four. No, I don't want. I don't want that voice. It sounds too roboty. The Jubilee. In the Jubilee year, all property will revert to its original male owner or male heir, Lev. 25, 8, 17. In the case of the daughters of Zelophad, it has been established that women can inherit land, 27, 1 to 11. If a daughter inheriting property marries outside her tribe, it appears that the law of Jubilee will cause the land to be transferred to the tribe of the new husband. In a society where tribal membership is reckoned according to one's father, a property-owning woman who marries outside her tribe and bears a son creates an heir for her husband's tribe. Granting her son a claim to land that should belong to her own father's tribe, not her husband's, to keep this from happening, Moses rules that a woman with property may not marry outside her tribe. In agreement with this, the daughters of Zelophad marry relatives in Manasseh, thereby ensuring that all of their heirs will be from the tribe of Manasseh just like Zelophad. Okay, well, that is it for numbers, you guys. Virtual high five because I can't high five the camera, also because I don't have my camera on. Um, 
but yeah, let's uh, let's read the introduction to Deuteronomy. We get to start a new book and see Christ preach through this book. So Deuteronomy. So the introduction from this side says Deuteronomy, which means second law, is a retelling. Uh, is a retelling by Moses of the teachings and events of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, it includes an extended review of the Ten Commandments and Moses' farewell address to a new generation of Israelites as they stand ready to take possession of the Promised Land. Moses reminds them of God's faithfulness and love, but also of God's wrath on the previous generation of Israelites because of their rebellion. Repeatedly, he charges Israel to keep the law. Deuteronomy is a solemn call to love and obey the one true God. There are blessings for faithfulness and curses for unfaithfulness. The book closes with the selection of Joshua as Israel's new leader and the death of Moses. Awesome. Alright, and before we start, I really want to read um, feel free to pause at any moment and, and steal these notes um, but yeah I, I would say pause and read this um, and then pause and read that as well and then what we're going to read right now is we're going to read this this is vital Christ said that all the scriptures were about him. So let's read this section. Let's let's let uh this so Deuteronomy chapter one. According to Doit seventeen fourteen twenty. The Israelite king was to meditate daily on the teaching set out in Deuteronomy 5.26 and live by it. As the divinely chosen heir to the Davidic dynasty, Jesus undoubtedly knew well the contents of the book of Deuteronomy and quoted it when tempted by Satan. Matt 4.11 Luke 4.1.13 through types and prophecy, Deuteronomy also points to Christ. He is the Passover lamb, 16 Brun note, and the coming prophet, 1815-19 note. Moses, the f Founder of Israel, he is the Passover Lamb, 16 Brun Note, and the coming prophet, 1815 19 Note. Moses, the founder of Israel's theocracy, mediated the Old Covenant, but Jesus Christ, the Son of God, mediated the New Covenant, Jer, 31 31 34, Heb, Free, 1. Whereas the Old Covenant was written on tablets of stone, Christ writes the New Covenant through the Spirit of the Living God on the tablets of human hearts. Core 3. Four. The Old Covenant called for shedding the blood of animals. The everlasting New Covenant was instituted once and for all by the blood of Christ. Jer 3240. Heb 9.11.28. The Old Covenant calls for a heart religion, but it failed through human weakness and became obsolete after its fulfillment at Calvary. Ram 8 Heb 7 12 8 13 
Okay, so on that note, um, again, feel free to pause and read any of these notes. And if you want me to post or go back, and I don't feel like here, I will go back because I did scroll through these really fast, so that wasn't really fair. So pause and read if you would like to. I honestly don't really think it's that. I mean, I know it's important, but just, yeah, if you want these notes, you're welcome to them. I would more so recommend the in-text notes, usually. But it's not that these aren't helpful. These are from the study Bi Reformation Study Bible, so... Yeah. And then there, there you go, and then there you go. Um... Okay, so let's go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arabah opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Aziroth, and Izahab. It is eleven days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses spoke to the people of Israel according to all that the Lord had. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arabah opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Aziroth, and Izahab. It is eleven days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. In the fortieth year, on the first day of the eleventh month, Moses spoke to the people of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment to them, after he had defeated Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon, and Og the king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth and in Edrei. Beyond the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses undertook to explain this law, saying, The Lord our God said to us in Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arabah, in the hill country and in the lowland and in the Negev, and by the seacoast, the land of the Canaanites, and Lebanon as far as the great river the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and to their offspring after them. At that time I said to you, I am not able to bear you by myself. The Lord your God has multiplied you, and behold, you are today as numerous as the stars of heaven. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, make you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you as he has promised you. How can I bear by myself the weight and burden of you and your strife? Choose for your tribes wise, understanding, and experienced men, and I will appoint them as your heads. And you answered me, the thing that you have spoken is good for us to do. So I took the heads of your tribes, wise and experienced men, and set them as heads over you, commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds, commanders of fifties, commanders of tens, and officers throughout your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, hear the cases between your brothers, and judge righteously between a man and his brother or the alien who is with him. You shall not be partial in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is God's, and the case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things that you should do. Then we set out from Horeb, and went through all that great and terrifying wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, You have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is giving us. See, the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take possession, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has told you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Then all of you came near me and said, Let us send men before us that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again of the way by which we must go up and the cities into which we shall come. The thing seemed good to me. And I took twelve men from you, one man from each tribe. And they turned and went up into the hill country, and came to the valley of Eshkel, and spied it out. And they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land, and brought it down to us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land that the Lord our God is giving us. 
yet you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord your God. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to give us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Where are we going up? Our brothers have made our hearts melt, saying, The people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. And besides, we have seen the sons of the Anakim there. Then I said to you, Do not be in dread or afraid of them. The Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes and in the wilderness, where you have seen how the Lord your God carried you as a man carries his son all the way that you went until you came to this place. Yet in spite of this word, you did not believe the Lord your God, who went before you in the way to seek you out a place to pitch your tents, in fire by night and in the cloud by day, to show you by what way you should go. And the Lord heard your words and was angered, and he swore, not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land that I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him and to his children I will give the land on which he is trodden, because he has wholly followed the Lord. Even with me the Lord was angry on your account, and said, You also shall not go in there. Joshua the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. And as for your little ones, who you said would become a prey, and your children who today have no knowledge of good or evil, they shall go in there, and to them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn, and journey into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. Then you answered me, We have sinned against the Lord. We ourselves will go up and fight, just as the Lord our God commanded us. And every one of you fastened on his weapons of war and thought it easy to go up into the hill country. And the Lord said to me, Say to them, Do not go up or fight. For I am not in your midst, lest you be defeated before your enemies. So I spoke to you, and you would not listen, but you rebelled against the command of the Lord, and presumptuously went up into the hill country. Then the Amorites, who lived in that hill country, came out against you and chased you as bees do, and beat you down in Seir, as far as Hormah. And you returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord did not listen to your voice, or give ear to you. So you remained at Kadesh many days, the days that you remained there. Deuteronomy. Okay, so that is it for um, Deuteronomy 1. Um, please pull out your Bibles if you don't have them open. I hope you do. Um, please pull up Mark 11. Mark 11 Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following... Okay, also I realized <clears throat> I forgot to bring up the notes from chapter 1 in Deuteronomy. So my apologies. Um, there are quite the notes from this chapter. So, if you want to use Speechify, you can. Um, well, I don't know if you can, actually, because if you don't have this uh, text. But you have the ability to read it out loud, so. <laughs> um, please go ahead and pause and read. 
pause read pause and read again this is for Deuteronomy the notes pause and read if you would like to of course pause and read pause and read pause and read if you would like to pause and read Pause and read. Pause and read. Yeah. Pause and read. All right. So um, now that leaves us to look at the mark eleven, one through eleven notes. So let's zero in on those. Chapter 11 11 1. When they drew near to Jerusalem. The journey, pen one note, reaches its destination, and what is called Passion Week begins. Jesus' decision to come up to Jerusalem is clearly determined by his understanding of the OT and his prophecies concerning his death. 831 Note Bethage and Bethany villages just east of Jerusalem, Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and rising about 200 feet, 61 meters, higher than the Temple Mount. This high hill commands a spectacular view of Jerusalem, and especially of the Temple. In Jesus' time it was covered with olive trees, but was stripped of them by the Romans during the siege of Jerusalem in A.D. 70. 11 to you will find. This text may witness to the supernatural knowledge of Jesus. See John 1. Colt, a young donkey. Matt 21 done 2, John 12 15. Matthew and John note that the OT prophesied Jesus' actions. 9 9. Which identify him clearly as the righteous messianic king, coming humbly to bring salvation to Jerusalem. Matt 21 1 5. John 12, 14, 15, 11, 8 cloaks on the road, a recognition of Jesus' royal dignity, see 2 Kin, 9, 12, 13, 11, 9 Hosanna, a GK, transliteration of the Aramaic words for save us, O Lord, P, 118, the crowd is shouting phrases from that psalm, which celebrates the procession of the royal Messiah. He who comes in the name of the Lord. This description of the Messiah from P.S. 118.26 echoes David's self-description in his confrontation with Goliath. 1 Sam 17.45 11 Tem, the coming kingdom of our father David. The crowd expects that Jesus' arrival marks the beginning of a military political insurgency that will banish Roman forces from the promised land. 11.11 he went out to Bethany. In Matt 21.12.22, Jesus proceeds to cleanse the temple upon his arrival and curses the fig tree the next day. C.F. Luke 1945.46. In Mark, Jesus returns to Bethany for the night. In the morning he curses the fig tree and then cleanses the temple. Probably Matthew treats the material topically. No specific time reference for the cleansing is given in Matt 21.12, while Mark, who places stories within stories 5.21.43.6.7.30, treats it chronologically.
Okay, well, that's it for today. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, precious, 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 holy, holy, holy God, thank you for letting us read together today. Please help us to continue to read these chapters again today to really think about them and help us to um, love you and meditate on the things that we've read, take notes, highlight, and just pray through these things, Lord. Um, thank you for your substitutionary death on behalf of all those who would repent and believe in the glorious gospel of Christ. Jesus, thank you for coming to die for us and that you resu resurrected, Lord. Um, please help us to um, live loving you, being willing to lay down our lives for you as well because you did it for us first, Lord. That we would um, have you as our treasure and our, our everything, Lord. That we would do whatever that you would call us to. That we would know what your will is by reading your word, Lord. Because you reveal your will in your word. Thank you again for today. And, um, yeah, please help us to uh, continue to, to know you and to think on the, th the things that we've read today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, grace and peace. See you in the next video. Bye.